we sing, there is none. There is, there is none. Like, like you, like you, Lord. No, no one else. No one else, no one else can else. touch my heart like you do. Get into marriage. Don't look for people that are fully away. They will give you problems because they, their, their demands, their expectation is too high. But what you're looking for, for those who are not married, and for those of us who are married, always pray to never be fully awake. The day you eat of the apple, and your eyes fully open, and you see your spouse finish, you stop falling in love. We sing, there is none, there is none like you, God. No one else, salvation is the first step that you desire God and when you desire God in God you yes, will go on and search and find there is none no there is none 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 there is of living water the living water of God is the one of God in the inside of you that is mixing scripture with scripture and is breaking things down and he knows which way to go may this wisdom so each time you look at the word of God and you are injected online service today. We believe God has so many blessings to prepare for you and that is why we encourage you to expect great things to happen to you during today's service. Let us worship, worship God and also listen to God's words. Remember, the order of your life is glory. It is working. 
Hello everybody, my name is Nelson. I'm here to welcome you today to the service of HLBC. Thank you again for joining us and I'm sure that the message has been transforming your life. I'm sure you've been moving from story to glory and glory to glory and I pray that that would never cease in your life in the name of Jesus. This is another service where God has prepared a table before you. Get your family around, get your son, get your daughter, get your husband, get your wife, get everybody to come down, get all of them now and say service is about to start because trust me, what God has prepared for you today, you do not want to miss. There's, there will be some singing, there will be some dancing, there, there will be some time for you to do some reading together. Then there will be the word, the word that has the capacity to transform your life. And I know that what God has prepared for you today, you will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Before we start, let's just say a quick word of prayer together. Could you close your eyes with me, please? Lord Jesus, we thank you because you're good to us. We thank you because you are a faithful father. We thank you for keeping everybody Thank you for all HIBC family wherever we are around the world. Thank you for bringing us together again every Sunday that everyone has been able to gather here. Thank you because for the lives that you have transformed. Thank you for the stories that you have changed. And thank you for the stories that you will even change today. Daddy, we pray that what you have prepared for each one of us today, we will not miss it. We will all be a partaker of this. And as we worship and as we praise together, that it let our praise and worship be acceptable unto you. I ask and I pray, Lord Jesus, that at the end of this service, Lord, what you have proposed for each one of us, Jesus, that we'll all receive it. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a great service, everybody. It is working. The Bible tells us, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. People of God, let us together praise him this morning. Let's give him all the glory. Let's adore him. Let's worship him and let's be grateful. He has kept us. Through every situation, he has been with us. He has watched over us. He has helped us. And he deserves all the glory. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace that you us. We could never repay, but from our hearts, we'd like to say that we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, for the grace that you have given to us, oh, oh, we could never repay you, but from our heart, we would like to let you know that we, we thank you. People of God, let us sing it to the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Jesus. But from my heart, we would like to say that we, we thank you. Sing it again to the Lord. Thank you. Lord, we are full of gratitude. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord. You have given us so much grace. You have shown us so much mercy. Yeah. We could never repay you, but from our heart, we would like to say that we thank you. Oh, we are thankful. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the grace you have shown us. Mercy, favor, love. Your blessings we could never repay you we could never repay but from our hearts we'd like to let you know that we are oh thank you our hearts are overflowing with gratitude to you 
regardless of our circumstance. We choose to be grateful. We choose to be thankful. We know that we could never repay. But from our hearts, we would like to say that we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we have no other God. But you, Lord, we have no other God but you. And you have done what no man has done for us. You will do what no man can do. Sing it along. I have no other God but you. I have no, no other God, no other God but you. You have done, yes, we know you are the almighty God. You will do, you will do what no man can do. We have done it before. We have seen your mighty hand. We have seen you at work in our lives all around us. You will do it again. We know, Lord, we believe you have done. You have done it before. Oh, yes, we have proof to show. We remember, we have testimonies. You will do it again. do it again. We believe, we have faith, we know you have done. You have done it before. You have done it before. And we know that you will do it again and again. What no man do. Father, we believe in you. We choose you. We choose to press on. We choose to believe that you who have done it before, you will do it again. We put our trust in you. We love you, Lord. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Our prophetic alignment this morning will be taken from Psalm 37. And we're going to read it together from verse 3 to verse 11. Psalm 37, verse 3 to verse 11 from New King James Fashion. I read, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desire of your heart. I decree this morning that Lord Almighty God is going to grant every one of us the desire of our heart in the name of Jesus. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 6, he shall bring forth your righteousness as light, and your justice as the known day. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prosper in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Verse 8, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It's only cause harm. Verse 9. For evil doer shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the heart. Verse 10. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look careful, carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. So shall it be for all the evil doer in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 11, But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace.
praise God and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful month of joy and gratitude that the Lord has brought us in. As the Lord has declared over us, over you, over your family, that this will be our month of gratitude. I decree over your life, over my life, over everyone listening to me, from this first day of November to the last day of November, there will be reasons for you to be grateful. There will be new happenings in your life. The things God that has, has done in your life, in my life before, shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. Things will get better and better and better from here on in your life, in my life, in the name of Jesus. Situations will improve for better. The, 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 the God of glory will shine the light of his countenance upon you, upon your family, upon me, upon my family forever, in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I'm grateful because I've got joy like a river. Say, joy like a river. I will start a series today that we've titled, Joy Like a River. And as we go into the word of the Lord this morning, can we just quickly bow our head as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the journey of 2020. We thank you because you have now brought us into our end of the year, which is the penultimate month of the year. We as a people are grateful from the whole of our heart as we have always been. In November, we come to say thank you. Thank you for your hand that is mighty upon us as a church, as a glorious people, and as a glorious church. Thank you for all the do doors that you have opened for us. Thank you for all the necessary doors and the necessary endings that you have helped us to witness. We ask, Lord, as we go into your word this month, starting from this time, that your Holy Spirit will breathe upon our heart to receive your engrafted word in the name of Jesus. Not just that we will listen to it as a sermon, but that we will receive it as a word from you, as a message to us forever. In the name of Jesus, take me over, Holy Spirit, and speak the mind of the Father to us in the name of Jesus. Reach everyone everywhere that is listening by the touch of your Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Let's go Holy Spirit. In Jesus precious name. Amen. Somebody say he lives in me. Making the most of me through his word. I am changing into what he wants me to be. From glory to glory. His word I'm about to hear. Will once again reveal his thought for me. I receive the word with joy and gladness. The order of my life is glory. It is working for me. Joy like a river. Joy like a river. Our text for this teaching series and our text for this month is from the book of Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. And wherever you may be, we can all read it together as it's showing on your screen. It said, therefore, with joy, Shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation? Let's read that again. Therefore, with joy, shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. One more time. Therefore, with joy, shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. There is a well of God that is called the well of salvation. From the Greek word and the Hebrew expression of that word salvation, we have a word called zozo from where we derive the word salvation from. Someone say with me zozo. This word of salvation is the bank of God that has everything that you will ever need to be comfortable in life. So when you need safety, it's in what is called the well of salvation. That is why if somebody was going to fall and another person helped them, they say he saved him or he saved her. If you are indebted and somebody came to the rescue and loaned you money or gave you money to pay off your debt, you say he saved me. 
So the word zozo or the word salvation goes beyond just giving your life to Christ. The word salvation as it's compounded in the word zozo is everything that you will ever need to make life comfortable for you. So your health is in zozo. Your wealth is in zozo. Your well-being is in zozo. And every situation, everything, if somebody was losing time, maybe because they couldn't travel faster, and somebody else gave them a lift to travel faster, he said, he saved me from missing my appointment. He saved me. So everything that we have been saved to rescue our life or to make things better for us is what we call the word, the zozo, meaning that every good thing that we ever need, every good thing that you ever desire, everything that you ever aspire to have is in that word zozo. Somebody with me says in the word zozo. Ah, I see the God of glory opening our eyes even to the secrets of his word in the name of Jesus. But there are a few things about this joy that we're referring to. Like a river. It's a joy that hooses, that flows from the heart. Seven things that you should know about joy. Number one, joy flows from within, not from without. Where does joy flow from? It flows from the inside. Joy is a product of a depth. Happiness flows from around. So when things are working well, people are behaving themselves, everything is in order. Or maybe you are hearing a music or something good has happened to you outwardly, you get happy. But joy does not come from outside. Nobody gives you joy other than the source of joy himself. So joy flows from within, not from without. Somebody say with me, that I say joy flows from within? Not from without. Once again, the joy is flowed from within. Not from without. Now, two things I want you to know about joy is that joy is like an ATM to withdraw from the source of blessing. So if we're saying that Zozo contains everything that you will ever need, joy is an ATM card. Joy is like an ATM to withdraw from the source of the blessing. That is why he says, therefore, with joy shall ye draw, shall you draw, shall I draw. So we can actually say that scripture to, be, to say, with joy shall you withdraw. It is with joy that you will make a withdrawal from the wells of salvation. So that wells of salvation is not just one well. In every area, just like you don't have just one cash point or cash machine, there are different places in health, in wealth, in riches, in grace, in every other area that we need withdrawal. That is why the scripture was speaking to us from the book of Psalms. He says, says let us come into his presence with what? With thanksgiving. Let's come into his presence and into his uh, into his presence with praise he said let us come to where let's come with thanksgiving and we come with praise in our heart somebody say rejoice, rejoice. so let's come into his house let's wake up with joy and with thanksgiving in our heart number three joy is far more nourishing than happiness happiness is volatile happiness is periodical happiness is for a moment happiness can go and sadness can step in but joy even when you are sad joy is latent in the inside of you joy is far more nourishing than happiness when you get the joy you are just happy when you get the joy, you just feel like singing. When you get that joy, like the songwriter, we say, I've got joy like a river. 
joy like a river joy like a river in my soul i've got i've got joy like a river joy like a river joy like a river in my sing it again wherever you may be i've got good joy like a river joy joy like a river yes joy like a river in my soul i've got joy got joy like a river joy like a river joy like a river in my soul number four joy breaks through all circumstances to produce testimony joy does what joy breaks through all circumstances to produce joy so the circumstances may not be appealing to you it may not be but if you let joy comes in if you allow joy and you get rid of sadness if you let joy and you get rid of your feeling and your emotion but you allow joy to step in what you begin to experience is that joy begin to pave away joy is like water water finds its level joy is like that wherever you turn and you activate joy in your heart joy begin to find a way it begin to find a way to break down the barriers to break down the tough situation and then it brings out a testimony so no matter what you're going through no matter what is going on stop turning to your feelings let joy take over you let there be the baptism of joy upon everyone listening to me upon all of our lives from today in the name of jesus Amen. i decree the baptism of the spirit of joy upon your life upon my life upon your family upon my family in the name of jesus Amen. number five joy reflects the kingdom joy does what reflects the kingdom in romans chapter 14 verse 17 he said the kingdom of god does not consist in drinking and in, 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 in eating and dining alone but in righteousness in peace joy in the holy ghost number six joy guarantees victory no matter the outcome mm. and i'm sure that is surprising to some other people no matter the outcome sometimes you win sometimes you lose that is just our outcomes two possible outcomes sometimes our expectations does not come the way we are but one thing is that even when you felt that you have lost there is victory inside losing when you take joy on you realize that joy guarantees that god make all things to work together in your good i pray today that somebody will begin to see the way god sees that's why the scripture says in the book of corinthians he said whilst we look not at the things that are seen not everything but most things does not really appear the way they come out the outcomes of situation the outcome of that person of the behavioral pattern of that person that is giving you depression that is giving you heart uh, 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 i mean how do i call it difficult to think difficult to breathe and you think you're tired of the situation really there is a victory if you look at that situation and you look at that person the way God sees the situation. Somebody said, may I receive grace? grace. Say, so I, I receive grace to see what God sees. See what God sees. In, every in every situation, in every circumstances in every circumstance that, I through, that I go through, I receive the attitude of joy, the attitude of joy from, the from the throne of God in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Number seven, joy is a medicine that gives vitality to your spirituality. I'm going to say that again. Joy is a medicine that gives vitality to your spirituality. I know that was spirituality. Some of us will be wondering. That's my own coined out vocabulary. But joy is a medicine that gives vitality to your spirituality. When you got joy, you are able to use your spiritual fortitude better. 
when you've got joy, you are able to tap into your spiritual resources better. When you got joy, you are able to assess the supernatural better. When you got joy, you are able to invoke the power of God better. Where you've got joy, you're able to assess the gate of God. You come into the gate of God where you can assess power even the more. Someone say, I got joy. So those are seven things. Joy flows from within, not from without. Joy is like an ATM to withdraw from the source of all blessings. Number three, we say, Joy is far more nourishing than happiness. Let's read it together. Number four. Joy breaks through all circumstances to produce testimony. Number five. Joy reflects the kingdom of God. Number six. Joy guarantees victory no matter the outcomes. Number seven. Joy is a medicine that gives vitality to your spirituality. You may be experiencing mockery. You may be going through circumstances that people are looking down on you. Never allow the mockers or the mockery to affect your joy level. Joy will turn things around for you. I decree joy will turn things around for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You're not hearing me. I say joy will turn things around for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can do better than that. I said, joy will turn things around for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't mind the mockers. Don't mind the mockery. There are those who have mocked you very soon. They will be shocked on how God has turned everything about your life. Everything about your circumstances. Everything about your marriage. Everything about your, your businesses. God is turning them around for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything about your life, everything about my life, Amen. God is turning them into beauty, Amen. into glory, Amen. into blessing, Amen. into uplifting, Amen. into divine testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you got to understand this, that your look can give you away. Even how you look alone can invite the demons of sadness into your life, into your family, into your space. Don't live a life where People are asking you what's wrong. What's going on? Because if you're not careful, sometimes you're feeling overtaking you and all the veins on your body. Your body language gives it all that God is not present on your face. Endeavor to carry the kingdom of God on your demeanor all of the time through joy. Endeavor to do what? Endeavor to carry the kingdom of God on your inside, through your demeanor. I mean, in your demeanor. Let your demeanor reflect God. Let it reflect God through joy. Do not let people be asking you what's going on. Do not let people be asking you where is your God. <laughs> but listen to this. You know the world is having a bad day. We all see it all around. There is protest here and there. There is lockdown all over the world. But here are the very thing that we all know. That are indicators you know that the world is having a bad day. You know the world is having a bad day when you turn on the news and there is display of emergency lockdown. We've just been told again that possibly this week that I mean we may have another lockdown. You know the world is having a bad day when you wake up in the morning and there's a lot on your phone that you are overdrawn. Your bank is telling you that you owe. You know the world is having a bad day. You know the world is having a bad day when your boss tells you that there may be no future for you at the job. Or you may be getting a pay cut. Then you know the world is having a bad day. There is more than enough bad day news or experiences out there. We live with it on a daily basis. You know the world is having a bad day when your health is challenged with ailment. You have no quick remedy for. You've been trying and trying to overcome that pain. That sharp pain, that situation, that thing that withdraws from your strength or your focus. You know the world is having a bad day. You know the world is having a bad day when you wake up in the morning and there is no smile on the face of your spouse. Or your children are frowning. You know you're having a bad day already. You know the world is having a bad day when you call. 
or when you call, you ask your bank or you call to ask your bank for help or you apply for loan or you apply for credit and you are turned down. You know the world is having a bad day when you try to lose weight but you realize you've gained more. You know you're having a bad day when you try to control your heart, your breath. You're trying to control that blood pressure and then it's getting worse. You know the world is having a bad day when you call the suicidal prevention and they put you on hold. Then you know that the world is having a bad day. But despite all that the world is going through, no matter what we're going through, we are not naive to think that we will always be on the top of the world, walking on the mountain. We're not that naive. We're not that naive that everything will be so rosy and then it's all uh, okidori, uh, is he okidori or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, okidori. For there will be occasions that we will have to travel in the valley for a while. We cannot be on the mountain all the time. There will be times that we have to travel down the valley. But neither am I so stupid. I mean, spiritually ignorant that I'm not aware that God has provided for us in time of those valley experience a way of escape. Someone say a way of escape. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it said, no temptation. Somebody said, we meet no temptation. No temptation. <laughs> I'm not hearing you. I said, no temptation. No temptation. As overtaking you, except that which is common to mankind. He said, and God is faithful. I want you to sound that loud. Say, God is faithful. God is faithful. He would not let you be tempted beyond that which you can bear. God will not allow much to be upon you that you cannot bear. You don't want to take from the river that is in the inside of you to handle it. Don't make yourself that mentally lazy to always think this is the end and then you are, you are saying with your mouth what you, your heart knows that is not actually true. It's not the end of your life. It's not the end of the situation. It's not the end of your finance. It's not the end of your life. It's not the end of your marriage. There is still a way out. There is still light in the tu tunnel. There is still hope. He said, for he that is joined to all the living. What happened to them? He said, there is hope. But when you are tempted, he will always provide a way. How so you can endure it. Ha! To operate in this world and be victorious, we have to be ready to leave of the kingdom in the midst of darkness. We have got to be ready to live a life of the kingdom. We've got to be ready to live what? The life of the kingdom in spite of the darkness. Do you know why? Isaiah prophet in Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 and 2. He said arise. Somebody said with me arise. He said arise shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And then he wants, he says, see, darkness covers the earth. And thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. I decree God's glory appears over you. God's glory appears over your family. God's glory appears upon every one of us in the name of Jesus. Someone said, God's glory appear over me. Say, God's glory appear over my family. Say, God's glory appear over my home. Say, God's glory appears over my business. God's glory appears over my ways. My going out. My coming in. My sleeping. And my waking up. God's glory appears over me. Why? Is joy important? Why is joy important? Number one, trial and temptations are inevitable. Please say that out loud with me. Say what? Trials and temptations are They are inevitable. He said, have respect unto covenant. Psalm 74, 20. He said, have respect unto covenant because the habit, he said, for the habitation of the world is full of cruelty. 
For the dark places of the earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. And as we read earlier in that Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13, he said, no temptation has befall or overtaken you except that which is common to man. So we've got to understand, we've got to realize that trials and temptation are inevitable. Number two, whatever you are going through is common to mankind. No matter what you are going through, other people have been through it. Some other people are going through it right now. No, say, this is too much on me. No, you are better than that. There is a river from the inside of you. It's the river of God. And out of that river comes forth joy. No matter what you're going through. Joy is a prescription against all form of anomalies in your life. Number three, God is faithful. So be glad. Somebody tell me God is faithful. God is faithful. In that first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, he said, But God and God is faithful. He will not let, he will not let you be tempted beyond that you which you can bear. So remember always that God is faithful. So in the faithfulness of God, we celebrate in advance. We celebrate ahead because you know. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to give in. They refused to throw in the towel. Like Job, he was advised after he lost everything that he should deny God, that he should curse God. But listen, the guy said, No, he's slaying me. Yet will I what? Yes, will I trust him. Yes, will I praise him. Yes, will I be joyful. That should be our testimony. Never let our pain divide, define our expression to God. That no matter what we go through, no matter what life throws at us, we turn it to testimony, we turn it to joy, we turn it to, you know, gratitude from our heart. I know sometimes that may be difficult, it may be easier said than done. But as long as we are alive, we can practice this principle by turning on the heart of gratitude. If God has not done what we want him to do, we can continue to thank him for what he has done. If we continue to thank God for what he has done and is yet to do what we want him to do, we must now turn to thanking him for not doing what we are expecting him to do yet. Because in everything, God has a purpose. Someone tell me he has a purpose. He has a purpose. Number four, God will not let you be overstretched. Somebody said, oh, God will not let me be overstretched. He said, the one who created you, just like the manufacturer of everything, every product, like a car, they know that, yes, we put 260 speedometer on the speedometer, but possibly, probably, the car can go maybe 300 or 280. They know the stretch limit. But also, once you're reaching that they built in certain technology that can shut it down or that can make you realize that not here is the limit. It's the same way God has parameters in the inside of you already. That before the situation could ever overwhelm you or overtake you, God knows what to do. So God will never let you be overstretched. Number five, God will make a way for you. Uh, somebody said that, said God will make a way for me. You remember Dom West wrote a song. He said, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Believe him. Trust him by faith. God will surely make a way for you. Someone said God will surely make a way for me. He made a way for me in 2020. He made a way for you in 2020. Guess what? In 2021 is going to even be better. Things will get better. Greater doors will open. There will be better blessings. There will be better finances. Be 
This component defines what? Defines the life and the if you want to understand what the environment of God is, where God dwells, who God is, God is righteous, God is peaceful, and that's why when one of the angels become adulterated and he tried to bring war in the place of peace, he was cast down. It was what? Cast down. One of the things you must fight is anything and anyone that come to disrupt the peace of your organization, the peace of your family. The peace of God is a cardinal component of what makes God up. And lastly, it's a joy in the Holy Ghost. So joy invites righteousness into your life. When you let joy into your life, it brings righteousness with it. Joy brings peace into your situation. I say that again. I say joy invites righteousness into your life. When you live a life of joy all the time, it's easier to be righteous. By being righteous in the eyes of God. That's what happened to David. David is one of the most misunderstood human beings on the earth. People are watching his foot, but God was keeping his heart, record of his heart. When the man wakes up, he rejoices, he praises God, and it's not just about the singing, but he purifies his relationship with God by having an expression of worship, of praise, of thanksgiving, of happiness, of joy in the Holy Ghost on a daily basis. So on a daily basis, God cleanses him. God washes him. God purifies him. God represent him, him to himself. Like Paul was saying in the book of Ephesians. He said that he, he, by the washing of the word. Number three. Joy sustains the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. I'm going to say that again. Joy does what? Joy sustains the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You come by your righteousness. You cannot by your own will of holiness or by your own rules sustain the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is the joy of God that sustains the presence of the Holy Spirit. So when joy is silenced, your peace is tampered with. When joy is silenced in your life, your peace is what? Is tampered with. Also note this, when joy is taken, oh, I have a shatter. When your joy is taken, your uprightness is not guaranteed because your emotion then rules over your life. I'm going to say that again. In, I mean, when your joy is taken, your uprightness, your ability to be upright before God is not guaranteed because your emotion steps in. When joy is not there, all you are reacting, you are reacting to the forces of your emotion. You are reacting to what you feel, what you suspect, what you think, and what you and then you are do, adding permutations upon permutation. You are trying to work things out, and when you get locked up in that emotion, you've lost the presence of the Holy Spirit. You may be thinking that you have Him. You may be thinking He's speaking with you, but He's not there. It's your you are falling with the dictates of your emotion, according to how James expresses it to you. He said, "You ask, but you receive not." Because you are asking out of your lust. When we're not careful, we're, we're weighing, we're judging people. We're judging, people, judging people's heart, judging people's move. We're judging circumstances and, and, and we're putting it together and we're making conclusion in our heart without letting the Holy Spirit be the master, crafter, the one who knows the end from the beginning. Sometimes we take rules into our own hand with our feeling and we begin to dictate the outcomes of other people's life. Begin to pass judgment on other people's life. When God is actually working on that life, God is actually doing something and is playing a role, and then we make a conclusion where God is putting a comma. In fact, in some cases, God is actually so, so seriously at work on somebody, but we, just from our hearts, we begin to let our emotion rule over us, and we miss control God, we miss control people, we become sad, and we lose what the outcome that we should be benefiting from, from that relationship. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let the joy of God in. So joy is not an emotional attitude. Somebody said that with me. Say joy is not an emotional attitude. 
Joy is the flow of the glory of God into your life. Joy is not an emotional attitude. Joy is the flow of the glory of God into your life. Joy is a water of life that you drink from God, from the river of God. I'm going to say that again as I close. Joy is a water of life. Help me again. Say joy is a water of life. I can't hear you. Say joy is a water of life. Joy is a water of life that you drink from the river of God. You remember the woman at the well? She at the river. She at the well. She probably owned or a family or as environment on the well. Jesus Christ came there, asked her for water. And little did she know that this is the true well of life. That water, I mean that well of life. Joy is the water of life that you drink from God. Somebody say, I want joy. joy. Say, I want more joy in my life. life. We drink of the river of God by declaring and expressing with our mouth that God is with us like a river. We drink of the river of God by declaring and expressing with our mouth that God is the source of the river of water, of the river of life. God is in the source. God is the source of our joy. God is with us like a river. Is with us like a river. Is in the river. Is the source of the river. So we shall throughout this month declare with our mouth from the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 46 from verse 4, to 11. Recognizing that we need our mouth to be joyful, we're going to be declaring together. And that's one of the exercises that we're going to do right now as we close. I want everybody, wherever you may be, gather your children, gather your friends, gather your spouses, gather everyone in your household, and let's read this declaration. As I was reading through this scripture and crafting this message, by the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helped me to find this scripture in the best possible translation to help us to make it as a declaration. Psalm 46 verse 11. Let's all read it together from verse 4 to 11. And we're going to be doing this all through this month. Are you ready? Let's go. There is a river that brings joy to the city of God. To the sacred house of the Most High. God is in that city. And it will never be destroyed. At early dawn, it will come to its aid. Nations are terrified. Kingdoms are shaken. God thunders and the earth dissolves. The Lord is with Almighty is with us. Let's say that again. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and see what the Lord has done. See what amazing things he has done on the earth. He stops walls all over the world. He breaks bows, destroys spears, and set aside and shields on fire. Stop fighting, he says, and know that I am God, supreme among the nations, supreme over the world. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Listen. He said, he stops wars. He stops protest. He stops every form of uproars around the world. I make a declaration by the Spirit of God that from this November, peace has come to the world. From this month of November, peace has entered the world. Demi crudayano secretiada. I decree by the word of God fighting stops around the world in the name of Jesus. He said knows that God is supreme among the nations. Therefore over all the nations of the earth and make a declaration by the spirit of God peace has come to the world. Every agent that is causing uproar 
causing agitations and anger around the world. The God of glory will silence them in the name of Jesus. Amen. This month, I decree bad ne nuklo pan nuklo brekes kopaye de suyato. Yehikiri paro taliano sipre. The world will begin to experience order, Amen. the supremacy of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So to drink from the river of God, you must be joyful. Somebody say with me, you must be joyful. Are we still together? Say you must be what? Be joyful. But the river is a well of salvation. So I invite you to the well. Come and drink of the well of salvation. Come and drink of this well of salvation. Come and have your sins forgiven. And come and become the child of the living God. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord. You've been lost. You've been far away from God. You've been living a life on your own. You've been catching fun. But God is knocking on the door of your heart right now. Say, come unto me. I'm inviting you to give your life to Christ and be born again today. You're listening to me wherever you may be. And although you've been a Christian, but you've really never accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior. You're that person. You want to make today that beautiful day when you come to Jesus as a son, as a daughter. If you're that person, wherever you may be, I want you to put your hand on your chest. Thank you. For wherever you're doing that from, I want you to say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of every sin and wash me in your precious blood. I believe you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Come into my heart. Come in to stay. I believe I'm now yours forever. I believe I am now born again. I believe all things have passed away. I believe I'm a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for that brother, that sister, wherever they may be, coming to you today. I rejoice with the host of heaven, rejoicing over this life that is accepting the Lord with their heart and with their mouth. I ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to fall upon these individuals from today. That the Holy Spirit will take over their mind and it will help them to interpret the voice of God. That from today they begin to desire to know God the more, to begin to search this Holy Scripture and to begin to hear the voice of God. The power to walk this race until the end be released into their life. In the name of Jesus. The power of God to go till the end be released into their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for writing these names in the book of life forever. In Jesus' wonderful and glorious name we pray. Amen. Someone tell me joy like a river. So we rejoice with you, whoever you are, wherever you are, that you're making that prayer. I would like to hear from you. We have some information on the bottom right now. You can write to us at admin at elevesbiblechurch.org. Admin at elevesbiblechurch.org. I would like to hear from you. I'd like to hear your testimony of how you receive Jesus, where you live, around which area, and what church you can key in to as you begin, continue to develop yourself in Christ. Thank you and the Lord bless you. I'd like to hear from you and send out a gift of a book to you. The Lord bless you. It is working. Hallelujah. As we end up this teaching today, Nicholas Champfort said, the most wasted of all days is one without laughter. I want to encourage you as you go into a new month, into a new week, into a new day, turn your laughter on. Turn joy on in your life. Sometimes your joy is the source of your smile. But sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. That niche star, huh? 
He said, sometimes your joy is the source of your smile. He said, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. However it is, you want your joy to be intact and expressive with your laughter. With your laughter. Somebody laugh. Look at someone say, laugh. laugh. Say, laugh. laugh. Mark Twain says, to get the full of value of joy, you must have someone to divide it with. So it's not just enough to be happy. You say, yeah, I'm happy. I'm, okay. I'm joyful. No. Share your joy with other people. Be happy with yourself. Be happy with your family. Be happy with your children. Be happy with your spouse. Circumstances will happen. The devil will try to throw sand in your love. Be happy. Be joyful. Laugh. Smile. Play. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Revelation is what makes you to survive the storm of life. It's not your thinking. It's not your feeling. It's not your emotion. Walk in the revelation of joy. It works. Walk in the make your environment a happy environment. An environment of joy. I encourage you to take a permanent decision to be permanently joyful no matter what may come your way. I say the Lord is taking you from glory to glory. As we recap, the three components of the kingdom of God are what? Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Indeed, the order of your life is glory and it is working. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord, somebody. Your joy will take off to another level. From this month onward, in the name of Jesus. From this moment on, the power of the Holy Spirit from the inside will power your joy. Will power my joy. That it will keep on flowing. The river will keep on flowing forever in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' glorious name, we we'll pray. Amen. Please, in a moment, let's quickly listen to our worship planning team as they bring us of information that is of help to us and also to be able to take our offering. The order of your life is glory. It is working. God bless you. Hello, everyone. Here are some healing Bible Church announcements to keep you updated. Join us for our various weekly meetings. On Sunday, join us at 10 a.m. for our online service at hlbcmedia.online.church or He Lives Bible Church Facebook page and YouTube channel. Power Hub every Tuesday from 7 till 8 p.m. on Zoom. And remember, you can give your tithes and offering to, please pay to HLBC, sort code 205740, account number 83241505. Details are also on the screen. The order of your life is glory. glory. It, it is, is working. working. It is time for an offering. Now, an offering is also a form of worship. When you give to the Lord, it is a form of worship. Taking that which you have and giving it unto God as an offering is a form of worship. And whenever we worship the Lord, the Bible says that the windows of heaven are opened and blessings are poured out to us. And that will be your portion today in the name of Jesus. As we give our offerings, the Lord will bless us. Now, you can give electronically. With um, the other details that have been displayed on the screen, you can give um, on, the, on any of the bank details that has been shown on the screen. We have the sort codes and we have the account details there. As you give, the Lord God Almighty will multiply you in Jesus' name. Now let's just pray and bless the offering. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you because your word makes us to understand that when we give, it will come back to us. Father, we thank you because we know that as we have given, we will receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for those who have given. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for you will replenish them in the name of Jesus. Father, those who have it in their heart to give, Father, we ask, we ask that you accept their, their offering that has been given from their hearts. And Lord God Almighty, we ask that you will provide for them that they will be able to give in the next time in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Supernatural. Your Father, we bless this offerings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name.
Amen. In the name of Jesus. You can also reach us on any of our social media platforms on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter, and we'll be glad to receive you. If you have any reason at all that you need to speak with the, the church administration, just give us a call on the numbers that have been displayed on your screen, and you can also send us an email, and we'll be glad to respond to you. The order of your life is glory. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for joining us again today. As we've all known, the Lord has declared that this is our month of gratitude. So we go into this new week with a heart of gratitude. Receive the baptism of gratitude in the name of Jesus. Amen. Great things are happening in the Leaves Bible Church this month. We're starting fellowship in the city of Lagos, in the province of Lekki, in Lagos Island. And we thank the Lord because that fellowship is taking, play, uh, is taking off from the 12th of November, Thursday, 12th of November. Please continue to pray for us as we see the hand of God mighty already upon us in that city. And we decree that we shall yet see glorious testimony from that church expression in the name of Jesus. Before the end of this month. Everything that is remaining that you need God to sort out for you this year. One by one, it will meet all your needs in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every stumbling block on your way to the next miracle, to the next provision, I decree, shall be removed. And from right now, your expectations shall be delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. I prophesy upon everyone. In the Leaves Bible Church, everyone listening to me, you're going out, you're coming in, is protected in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we travel by road, we are saved. Amen. When we travel by hair, we are saved. Amen. When we travel on the sea, we are saved. Amen. Every way, every medium of travel is secured for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are saved with what we eat. We, we are saved with the air we breathe. Amen. Everything will all go well for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even when there is a plan of evil one against your life. Against my life, the God of glory will supernaturally step in and he will avoid them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' wonderful and glorious name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, as we close, let's read together a prophetic declaration. Are we ready? So let's go. In the name of Jesus, God who has begun his good work in my life, my family, this country and this church will perfect his good work in my life this year, 2020. God will perfect every aspect of my life this year. He will make everything wonderful and full of glory. God will show me great favor and great mercy this year, 2020. People and situation will favor me at all times. My God will not forsake me. He will defend and support me all the way. Year 2020 is my year of perfection indeed. Miracles continue to happen for me. This is the best year of my life so far, and it will get even better from here. The order of my life is glory. It is working for me. In Jesus' name, amen. And our profession, for we are to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in us. Christ in us. Because the order of our life is? The order of our life is? The order of your life is? It is working. God bless everyone. See you next week. It is working.